In the previous two lectures, we have seen different properties of impulse signal. Now in this lecture, we will use those properties to solve these four problems you can see on your screen. In the first problem, integration is given and here we are integrating delta t minus 5 from minus 5 to 4. So whenever you have this kind of question, the first step is to plot the waveform of the signal. Here signal is delta t minus 5 and we have obtained delta t minus 5 by performing the time shifting. Originally we had the unit impulse signal and after this we performed time shifting in which we are shifting the unit impulse signal towards the right by 5 units. So we have delta t minus 5. So when time t is equal to 5 we have an impulse and the weight of the impulse is 1 because we have the unit impulse signal shifted towards the right. So this is the waveform of this signal and the next step is to locate the lower and the upper limits. The lower limit is at minus 5. This is the lower limit and the upper limit is at 4. So this will be the upper limit. So this is the range of integration and in this range delta t minus 5 is equal to 0. So when you perform the integration you are going to get 0. So this is how you need to solve the first problem. So whenever you have impulse signal the first step is to plot the waveform of the signal and then locate the upper and lower limits. If the impulse is outside the range then the result of integration is going to be 0 and if the impulse is lying within the range then the result of integration will be equal to the weight of the impulse or simply the area of the impulse. Now let's solve the second problem. We are done with the first problem. In the second problem, in the second problem the range of integration is same. It is from minus 5 to 4 but signal this time is different. We have delta t minus 2. So if you plot the waveform of the signal you will find the impulse is located at t equal to 2 units, t equal to 2 units and the weight of the impulse is 1 again because we have unit impulse signal, signal delta t minus 2 and now we will locate the range of integration. It is same as the previous case minus 5 to 4. So you can see in the range of integration the impulse is lying therefore the result of integration is equal to 1. So this is the answer of the second problem and now we will move to the third problem. In the third problem signal xt is given and it is equal to sine t delta 2t minus pi. So let's see how we can solve the third problem. In the third problem we will use the property of multiplication and also the property of time scaling signal xt is equal to sine t delta 2t minus pi. Here sine t is let's say signal x1t and we are multiplying impulse. We are multiplying impulse to signal x1t. So we can use the property of multiplication but first we will use the property of time scaling and if you remember the property of time scaling it was like this delta a t we can write as 1 by mod a multiplied to delta t where a should not be equal to 0. We can use this property here because 2 is multiplied to the time t. But here there is chance of one mistake so we will take out 2 common and this point will be clear if you have seen the multiple transformations lecture. So I will not explain this concept more because we have already discussed it in the case of multiple transformations. So I can write signal xt as sine t multiplied to delta. I will take two commons. So inside the bracket I have t minus pi by 2 and now we can easily use this result. 2 is a positive number so modulus of 2 is also equal to 2. So in the next step I have sine t 1 by mod 2 or I can write 2 delta t minus pi by 2 okay so we are done with the simplification required for the time scaling now in the next step we will perform the simplification required for the multiplication 
and if you remember the property if you remember the property you will have the answer in one step the properties like this signal xt is multiplied to delta t minus t1 then we have x t1 multiplied to delta t minus t1 so this t1 here the amount by which we are performing the shifting is substituted here in place of t we will substitute t1 so we have x t1 multiplied to delta t minus t1 we will do the same thing here here t1 is equal to pi by 2 so instead of t we will write pi by 2 here so we have I will write down the solution here x t equal to sine pi by 2 pi by 2 because t1 is equal to pi by 2 multiplied to the impulse the impulse will remain same 1 by 2 delta t minus pi by 2 sine pi by 2 is equal to 1 so finally signal x t is equal to 1 by 2 delta t minus pi by 2 this is the answer of the third problem and now we will discuss the fourth problem the fourth problem is an extension of the third problem here we have multiplied sine t to delta 2t minus pi here we have multiplied e raised to power minus 2t to delta minus 2t plus 1 and after this after performing the multiplication we have also integrated the result from minus infinity to infinity so to solve this problem we will use two different properties the first property is property of time scaling this one and the second property we discussed in the last lecture and it was property number 9 and according to that property if there is signal xt and it is multiplied with delta t minus t1 and after multiplication if we integrate the result of multiplication with respect to time from minus infinity to infinity then the result of integration is equal to x t1 where t1 is the amount by which we are shifting the impulse signal so this was the property and first we will try to have this form because this signal is not in this form to get this form we will first use the property of time scaling so let's see the solution of the fourth problem integration i we can write as integration minus infinity to infinity e raised to power minus 2t delta i will take minus 2 common minus 2 common so inside the bracket we have t minus 1 by 2 dt okay i will separate the two solutions and after this in the next step we will use the property of time scaling and we have integration minus infinity to infinity e raised to power minus 2t 1 by mod minus 2 here we have minus 2 that's why we have 1 by mod minus 2 and delta t minus 1 by 2 dt now we will use this property and according to this property the result of integration is going to be x t1 here t1 is equal to 1 by 2 and x is equal to e raised to power minus 2t so the result of integration is e raised to power minus 2 inside the bracket 1 by 2 so we have e raised to power minus 1 now if you look closely you will find we have committed one mistake here we have delta t minus t1 here we have delta t minus 1 by 2 now what about this 1 over mod minus 2 we should include it with xt so we have 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 1 or we can write 1 by 2 e so this is the answer of the fourth problem whenever you are using any property you should take care while comparing the general result with the question because we saw it was very much possible to forget this 1 by 2 so you should compare the general result carefully. So this is all for this lecture. See you in the next one.